am so excited to share our monthly meal planning process with you. Kevin and I have been working for the last few months behind the scenes to unveil the secrets of our family of 11's food systems. And today, we get to start diving into that process. Get ready to discover the crucial tips on how to keep meal planning simple and keep meals running smoothly and effortlessly for your own family. We also have all kinds of hearty, delicious meals to keep you warm during these cold winter months. We're gonna be making a triple batch of lasagna, two which will freeze, and some potato soup. And we've got three different 100% freshly ground whole wheat recipes, of which I'm really excited to share the focaccia recipe. That one's delicious. We have a few other things we wanted to share throughout the day, including a weekly fill-in grocery haul that's coming. So we should probably get moving with breakfast. Harbor got us started earlier this morning by making some date and chocolate chip scones. This is one of those recipes that's that 100% freshly ground whole wheat. We've been experimenting with a number of different scone recipes and we've had all kinds of different results and honestly I've found that I really appreciate the variety. We've got some that are a little bit more crumbly, some that are a little more soft, and some that taste like a giant cookie. Those are delicious. So these that we're having today, I think are gonna be a little bit more on the crumbly side, more of like that traditional scone taste that you would expect. I can't wait to try them. All right, so I have Breslin here with me to make some orange smoothies. Since oranges are in season, we're actually not going to be using fresh oranges in this recipe. We're just gonna go with some plain old orange juice. You wanna make some smoothies? Yep. So we're gonna do one and a half cups of orange juice, or two oranges. Half a cup of yogurt. Two tablespoons of honey. One teaspoon of vanilla powder. I have found that the vanilla powder is really good for smoothies. And then the secret ingredient for our smoothies is meringue powder, but it ends up that we are out of meringue powder. So instead I've got some fluffed whipped egg whites that we're gonna do instead. I'm gonna do about a half an egg. And then we're gonna do about a half a cup of ice. About the meringue powder is that it gives it that like it gives it a frothy fluffy texture to it so the egg whites are gonna do that a little bit I don't think it's gonna be quite <laughs> as amazing but it smells really good oh, oh. <laughs> you're no. eating raw egg white <laughs> it's it yummy yeah okay oh this one is delicious your kids will love it. And for yourself or your older kids, throw some protein powder in there, throw some collagen in there, and turn it into a whole meal. I love having these colored bands on our mason jars to be able to know whose glass is whose. Everybody has an assigned color, and it makes it really easy to use the same glass throughout the day. Okay, so there is a make your own bread challenge going on, hosted by Mackenzie over at Little Fold Farm. I heard about this from Felicia over at Grains and Grit. I wanted to mention it because it just so happened that as I was looking at our menu and I heard about this challenge, I realized that their, their bread for February was focaccia and I had already had it on the schedule, so I thought that was pretty neat. Wanted to throw that in here. We're gonna add four cups of freshly ground soft white wheat. Our goal isn't just to make our own bread, but our goal is to not use any sort of pre-ground flour. Now after we've mixed it, we're gonna add the garlic and the olive oil and salt. Our focaccia dough is looking just like it should. So we actually wanna take that a step further and rather than just not buying bread from the store, we actually stopped buying all flours that are pre-ground from the store. We have our dough all mixed up. I'm gonna let it rise for 30 minutes and then I'm gonna do a stretch and fold on it. Then I'm gonna let it rise one more time for 30 minutes and do one more stretch and then we're gonna, you'll see, put it on, you'll see what we're gonna do after that. 
So that puts us at a point where if we want flour, we're grinding our own grains. We have removed things from our habits and added things to our habits. And what we have learned is the best way to do it is to just quit. So we just quit buying flour. I think we do have a couple bags downstairs that are like emergency only and it's been made perfectly clear that no one is to touch those bags unless absolutely necessary. It's so easy to let your guard down and drop your boundary on this. I think of when we switch to cloth diapers and people talk about how, you know, they would use disposable diapers for a vacation or for this or that. And I would be like, no, I can't because I'm afraid that if we go back to disposable diapers, it's something that will just slide on and stay part of our life forevermore. And so sometimes you just have to set hard boundaries and not cross them. All right, I think you've done a great job of this. I'm so excited to try the focaccia. Let's get this dough out on the baking sheet. I'm gonna add three tablespoons of olive oil to our baking sheet. I measured it because it, three tablespoons is way more than what I would have put on there. Now we're gonna add a heaping yeah. tablespoon of Italian seasoning. I'm gonna do two tablespoons of grated Parmesan. And lastly, I'm gonna sprinkle on some salt flakes. Pick the break. Better. 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 That is what I was trying to do. Duh, duh, duh. It actually worked. All right, I've solicited Asher to help make the potato soup. This is a yummy potato soup, especially on a snowy. Cold day. Cold winter day. It's got bacon, cheese, some Cajun seasoning. Oh, we went past that. <laughs> Those superb lids are just, yeah, awesome. Armor. Where am I sitting? You're right there. I'm not sitting there. Thank you. Yes. Good. I know. Perfect. Thank you. You, yeah, you gave him his. What? Mm -hmm. No, off myself. Yeah. Okay, so the problem with monthly meal planning is that most of the time people have a tendency to overcomplicate it, which turns it into a heavy, overwhelming task that never gets done. The trick is to keep things simple, not overcommit, 
and keep moving forward. This is what will make finalizing your weekly meal plan a breeze and allow you to move forward with the process, growing and getting better at it each week that goes by. Okay, so today is the time of the month where we're gonna sit down and do our monthly meal planning. And I have Harbor here with me because she has gone through living in our home for 15 years now. And she's learned how to cook, she's learned how to do chores, she's learned how to help manage our food supply with the inventory and the organizing and all of that. And so now it's time that she's going to help with this meal planning process as well. So while I teach you, I'm going to also be teaching her. I like to plan out our meals for the four weeks after our Azure delivery. So our Azure delivery comes in somewhere between Tuesday and Sunday, and then our monthly meal plan starts the Monday after that. And ideally, I like to have this done the week prior to when our Azure standard order needs to be finalized. This way I know what we need in the big picture, and it gives me an opportunity to grab less often used items from Azure standard, rather than running out to the store at the last minute just before we make a new recipe. Okay, so before we get started actually filling out this monthly meal plan, there's a few tools that I like to look at that I have prepared in advance. The first is the recipes I want to make list. This is a holding place for all of the recipes that kind of come to mind to me or you or anyone in our family that we decide that we want to make in the future. But a lot of the times it's not necessarily appropriate for the upcoming month. It might be like next winter even or fall so it's a good holding place for those recipes so I do a quick scan see if there's anything I want to add to the menu for this month and then everything else we just leave there okay next we're gonna look over our themed meal plan and this is not something that we hold to vigorously and actually we've been pretty consistent about doing taco tuesday for a really long time and i don't even have taco tuesday on here we'll see how that goes <laughs> this is just something that if i need a starting point i can use it if i want to change from it i do now to keep from flipping and flipping and flipping i will usually just pull this out of my notebook so that i have it right in front of me, easy to reference as we go through this process. Next, I go over our tried and true recipes. These are breakfast, lunch, sides, dinners, and desserts. These are all recipes that we've agreed on, that everyone loves, they're not too complicated, and they're meals that we can eat any time of the year. And then lastly, I take a quick look at the seasonal meal plan. Now, this is a process that I do once a quarter that I will talk more about in the future. We'll talk more about doing the spring meal plan, but since I already have the winter meal plan here, we're just gonna go from this point forward. So now it's time to actually jump on over to the monthly meal plan <laughs> and actually start moving forward. Yay. So before I start inputting any recipes on here, Again, there's just one more step. I've got a note section down here that I'm gonna make note of any significant activities or events or anything that we have on the calendar. Like appointments? Yes. One of the things I love about these disc bound pages is that if I'm working in multiple parts of my notebook at a time, I can pull it out and I can go over to my seasonal meal plan and have it and just flip back and forth easily. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start with just breakfast. I'm not gonna worry about anything about breakfast. And I'm going to look at my seasonal meal plan and kind of add these in where I feel like it might make sense. Is a question mark for I don't know when. Okay, so what I basically did here is I took some of the healthier meals, healthier meals, and I did those a couple times over the four weeks. And then for things like the cinnamon roll cake, since we just recently had that, You're doing it. I just did it once. I also went with the granola flavor that we have for this month and put that on two of our Fridays since granola is one of our Friday, Friday meal. meals. You'll also notice that there's a lot of empty space mm -hmm. still here. 
And that's mainly for breakfast. I know that we have a lot of tried and true breakfast recipes that we like to go back to and revisit over and over again. And so I am totally okay with leaving some of those more simple, easy recipes during most of the breakfast and then just doing a few of the seasonal menu items. So the last part for the breakfast is gonna to be to jump over to our tried and true recipes and fill in all of the rest of the blanks. Now, the one other part that I didn't put in here is we normally leave Saturdays open for kids choice. So you guys get to make whatever you want as long as it's approved by mom and dad. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna fill in my Saturdays here with kids choice and then look at all of these tried and true recipes that we have to fill in here on Tuesday we normally do an egg dish of some sort so on this first Tuesday we're just gonna go with eggs bacon and hash brown okay so as you can see I took the oatmeal and I repeated it a few times on the days that we have a tendency to have oatmeal days like Wednesdays and Sundays appointments and easy yes mm. easy meals and then I took all of these um, egg dishes and I did one per week on Tuesdays so we've got eggs bacon hash browns breakfast bowls breakfast taquitos breakfast burri burritos and then I just took some of this other stuff and filled it in you'll notice I didn't do things like pancakes or the biscuits and, gravy. biscuits and gravy because that stuff that or the baked french toast that stuff that's a little bit more work on your part and i figured i would save those if you wanted to make them on a kid's choice or if you want to jump in and say hey i'm going to make biscuits and gravy instead of oatmeal and then everyone gets excited i like that idea <laughs> all right so let's move on to lunches Okay, so the first part of lunches is really easy. I fill in leftovers on Wednesdays and Saturdays. Okay, so as you can see, I did basically the same thing. I took some of the meals that we haven't had recently and put them on here twice. And then the meals that we have had recently. Just mm, once. Yeah, because I don't love having things over and over and over again. <laughs> Okay, so again, we have some blanks in here. Not quite as many as what we do when I do breakfast, mainly because I like to have more seasonal meals during the season <laughs> that we're in when it comes to lunch and dinner. And so now we're gonna just jump over to the tried and true recipes to fill these in. Okay, so then we do dinners in the same exact order. Now, Kevin and I had a conversation about this beforehand. And I asked him, I said, do you want to pull any of these new dinner recipes into this month's meal plan? And he said, yes, how about this one and that one? And I said, okay, give me a day of the week that you wanna actually make that happen. I said, what day? And you're like, Monday. And I said, you wanna come home from work on Monday and make homemade pizza? You're like, no. And then you gave me another day and I was like, you wanna do this after? <laughs> Anyway. So we're not doing any of those? So this month and probably the next, the next few months, we're probably going to stay away from some of the newer recipes that we want to try just because. So from there, we go through and we work through our seasonal meal plan, and then, which is on this side, and then we jump over to our tried and true recipes, which again are on this side. Okay, I wanna mention that at this point, I do not add in sides. For me, it just takes too much extra brain power and effort. And it pushes me over the edge, feeling like I'm tied to the meal plan that I've put together because of the amount of work that's gone into it. When I do it like this, I have zero problem at all moving things around or even scratching them off completely when it comes time to finalize our weekly meal plan. And for me, having that flexibility is the key to making a monthly meal plan work. If monthly meal planning is something that you have found dreadful or overwhelming in the past, I really hope that this quick tutorial has been both educational and inspires you to give it a try. In our next meal planning video coming up sometime next month, we'll dive deeper into how we finalize our weekly meal plan. 
All right, let's jump back into the kitchen. Okay, so for some reason, I'm not a huge fan of Italian food, but man, for this winter recipe pack that we are putting together, it is full of a lot of Italian food. So if you love Italian food, keep an eye out because it'll be available in the near future. We're going to mix up some Italian seasoning. This is actually going to be a double batch of our seasoning mix that we have for the Italian seasoning because we store it in a quart jar. So, Zayden is going to do 16 tablespoons of oregano. 16, we're done! Good job. You're right, six, but we're gonna multiply that times two. What's six plus six? 12. Very good. Four. Six. Look at that, we need a basil. How about we just dump it in? I think that's okay. Yeah, just dump it in. Oh, yeah, this is yes, you know. Oh no, it's empty. <laughs> you know what? Two months ago, this would have been a huge pain point, but now it's quick and easy. 12 parsley going in. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep, I'm mm -hmm. sure. Mm -hmm. 12. 12. Between Zayden's heaping measurements and the little bit of Italian seasoning that was in here, we're gonna run out of space. So I'm done with this in a bowl. 12 tablespoons of garlic grain. <laughs> Four, six, seven, twelve. Eight, nine, ten. Twelve. 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 I cannot tell you how in love I am with our spice organization system. It's amazing. I love it. Homemade Italian seasoning. So I've got Lyndon in to help me and we are going to change a few things. We made this the other day. I thought it was delicious. Some of the kids didn't love it. We used the a Azure standard white chocolate chips. And the only thing that we could really think of to try to make this different was to try a different chocolate chip. So Mimi had a stash of the Ghirardelli white chocolate chips in her West Wing. So we are gonna make it with this. And I think we're gonna take the cream off. Some of the kids just thought it was too thick, which I think white chocolate is just, that's the way that it is. One of the other things that we're gonna change is we're gonna actually heat up the white chocolate in a double broiler first before we add the milk because we noticed that not all of the white chocolate was getting melted by just putting it in the milk. Wanna do that? All right, our white chocolate is melted. I'm gonna add the salt. That is I think it's going to be okay. I think it's going to be okay. The recipe that we have written calls for vanilla, which it can be vanilla extract or it can be vanilla powder. This is another one of those things that we're going to change. We did vanilla extract in the last one and then we're going to do vanilla powder in this one. 